All right, so what's up everyone? ZardyZ here, and I am going to be going over how to use the Anim Importer that I made for free tools. So, uh, first things first, you're going to need to have the Anim Importer downloaded, right, to run it. Um, there should be a files folder along with it, uh, and then two other folders inside of files called system and projectile. Cool. If they're not there, you might want to double check how you downloaded it. Um, Another thing that you need is uh, Fighter Factory Studio. Well, actually, uh, probably any version of Fighter Factory works. Uh, I use Fighter Factory Studio, and this is like the newest version as of 8.19 of 2023. Um, I like to use this one because it just works good for me. Um, other versions might work, but this is the one I like to use the most. So, And that's the one I've been testing everything on, so I would recommend getting that one. Another thing is we need a mutant character, right? So. Uh, you can come over to MuganArchive.com. They got a ton of characters in here. All kinds of crazy stuff. Um, you might need to make an account to download stuff. Which I think it's free. So it's like, uh, whatever. But it is kind of lame though. But eh, it is what it is. So. <clears throat> we are going to first be getting the sprites for our mutant character. So I'm going to be launching Fighter Factory Studio here. And I'm going to be doing Paul Phoenix. So. You come up here in the top left here, hit open, and I'm looking for Paw, Paw Phoenix. Uh, there should be a .def file. Uh, you want to open that. It's going to load the project up. Now up here at the top, there should be a tab called Sprites. You want to click on that, go to open, and open the .sff file that is associated with the character. This is going to have all the sprites inside of it, as you can see here. So this is all the sprites. Cool, awesome, great. Uh, I'm going to drag it all the way back to 1 here. <clears throat> I'm going to go back up to the sprites tab at the top. Click on that. Come on down to the save image aligned option. Not save image, save image aligned. I'm going to click on that. Uh, you want to click all. And then I don't change anything else. I just hit OK. And then we need to make a folder. So I'm going to make a new folder inside of my FrameMakers modding. Called Paul Sprites. Just so I know what it is. Right, so we're gonna open that. And then I typically just name it like something like Paul. Um, don't add any underscores or whatever, a hyphen. Don't add any of that because it might mess with the program. So I wouldn't I wouldn't use those two characters, but other than that, you should be fine to name whatever you want. I just like to name it something simple like Paul. So now I'm gonna hit save. So I'm gonna save all my images here. Um, for this perfect access, for the perfect axis, uh, you definitely want to hit yes for this because the program uh, uses the axis.txt file to know where to put the sprites in free tools. So I would definitely hit yes because if you don't, they might be aligned like down and not good. They might be aligned on zero zero, which obviously is not every character is on zero zero. Cool. So we're basically done with Fighter Factory for the most part. So now we can navigate over to the Anim Importer itself. Uh, you can double click it, run it, all that good stuff. It's gonna, it might take a little bit on the first run to load it, but it seems like after the first run it, lo it loads faster after that. There we go. So it's going to launch it up. Uh, the console is going to say what it is and then you know my name for credit or whatever. Right. Uh, that You don't have to worry about that part. So. Um, so as you see here, we have a few options here. We have folder, you get a new project. Um, but before we get into any of that, let's get into the settings here. So the settings basically helps you with uh, folder navigation. So for me in my setup, I typically have a mucin folder that has all my character data in it. So I like to set this setting to that mucin folder. So that way anything mucin related that I need for like a character, like their animation, um, yeah, like their animation file, it's going to open up that uh, folder that already has all my mutant characters in it, right? Uh, same thing with Frame Makers. Uh, I just make it my Frame Makers folder that has all my different projects in here. Oh, there's a ton. But uh, we're going to, you know, we don't have to worry about that. I uh, can hit save, save them, and then exit. Cool. All right. Um, there's different, different ways to in import animation. There's folder and Mugen. Um, for this video, I'm going to be doing Mugen and then. Uh, new project in particular. So 
it's going to ask for the mega.air file. So you got to go find that. So it should be in the characters folder, paw, and then it should be a dot air file. Once you have that uploaded like that, you hit go. So now this is going to bring you to this window, which has a lot going on. I know. Um, this is where you can manipulate all the animation names and move them all around and change the order, everything like that. So yeah, you can move them up and down like so. Um, you can copy them. So it's going to make a direct copy of that animation if you wanted it for some reason. Um, I don't want two copies of Stan, so I'm going to delete that one with the delete button. Um, you can combine animations together. So let's say I want to combine Jab 1, 2, and 3. Uh, if you hold control on the keyboard and click multiple rows, you can select multiple rows. And if you hit combine, it's going to combine Jab 1, Jab 2, and Jab 3 all into one animation. So the, it's going to play Jab 1, then Jab 2, then Jab 3 all within one animation. That way it's just all combined because some characters don't have them all combined. Like I've seen like the start of a Tatsu, the spin of a Tatsu, and then the end of a Tatsu. I was like, well, okay. So you can just combine that all into one and you'll be fine. So you can do that. Um, if you want to change the name of the animation, you can. Like if I want to change this blank one to test, I would just type in test here and then it's going to change it to test, right? Cool. Um, speaking of naming, over here on the right, we have this little arrow here. If we click on that, it's going to open up this nice little table that has all of the animation names that you need for a default character. Um, it's going to be green if it exists. It's going to be red if it doesn't exist. right? And this updates in real time. So if I change this test animation over to intro, intro is now going to be green. And if I change it back, it's going to be red. right? Cool. So you can always minimize it too. So you can do that. Um, if you notice, most of my animations already have names that are for free tools. Um, that's because for me personally, I like to rename all of my animations inside of Fighter Factory itself just because it has this nice viewer. I can view what it is while I'm renaming it so it makes it a lot easier instead of me just kind of going in blind this way. Um, but that's really up to you and what you want to do. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to talk about is types. So there's different types. So there's the character type, projectile and VFX. Uh, character type, basically the characters are going to be but basically the main thing, everything is set to the character by default. So you're going to be importing like jab1, jab2, and jab3 into the character.entity file itself, which is typically what you want for the most part. Um, there's also projectile, so we're going to be going over how to do that right now. Um, I'm going to make guard crouch a projectile because that'd be kind of funny. So you want to select everything you want to make a projectile and hit projectile. And boom, it's going to change the type over to projectile, like so. Um, one thing to note about projectiles is that they need type data. What does this type data mean? Basically, this is the projectile name. So I'm going to name this one projectile1, right? And if I hit edit type data, now it has projectile1. You never want to leave your type data blank unless it's like for the character type, right? Because this type data basically tells the program uh, what projectile to import into, right? So guard start, guard, and guard end are now all going to be associated with projectile one. Because if I have multiple projectiles, like let's say I want to make guarding in the air another projectile, um, I would want to name it projectile two because it's two separate projectiles, right? So. Basically, you need to have different names and you got to associate the, the type data with the projectile you want to create, right? Which is fun. Um, and another thing is VFX. So VFX, basically, I know some moves have yeah VFX with it, right? Uh, that you want to just import as an image layer inside of that um, animation. So for special up, for Paul, he does his like lightning, light, uh, lightning uppercut attack. So I'm gonna go find it. Yeah, there it is. So he does, you know, he does, he does that. But then when he does it, he also has the little lightning that goes with it. So we want to import that, but I want to just import it into one animation instead of like having to do it myself because I'm lazy. So on the animation that is VFX, you can mark it as 
v of x type. And then for the type data for the v of x, you want to hook it up with the animation you want to attach it to. So this is going to attach um, the special up VFX animation to the special up animation. We'll see it when I finish importing it. Um, another thing, uh, you can save and load all of this data uh, from a JSON file. Um, by default, there is a backup anims.json that is generated uh, whenever you open a project and whenever you change anything in here. So if I change a name of like Perry in to Perry 2, uh, it's going to save all that data again. So that way if you mess up or there's an error somewhere, you can just import it that way. Um, you can also save your progress. So I'll give it a name like Paul uh, Anims and then specify save folder. We can just do Paul's you can folder, it's fine. Uh, you can hit save, it'll save it. And now you have all of that data stored inside of your character, your save folder. So I'm gonna go to it. And here we go, we have pawanims.json. And basically it's all the data that is found in this table. It's kind of all like sorted out in a JSON format, right? So now if I mess up uh, naming an animation or something like that, like I named, I don't know, like like test this for some reason, but I don't want it to be like that. I can go to browse now, go to that JSON that I just saved for paw, and then I can import it. And now that I don't know goes back to, or that that thing I changed now goes back to I don't know, right? Cool. So that's kind of how to use this screen here. It's kind of complex, but you'll get used to it the more you use it. And most of the time, if you set it up, uh, in Fighter Factory beforehand, you don't really got to do too much in here other than mark some things. Oh, there's one more thing I forgot. Invert. So you can invert uh, projectiles. And, well, you can invert any animation you want. What's inverting do? Basically, it takes it, the animation, and it just flips it all around on the uh, x-axis, right? Um, this is most useful for stuff like back airs. Uh, where is it? Aerial back. Where is it? Aerial back. Dude, I feel blind right now. Oh, there it is. So aerial back here, you can select the animation, hit invert. It's gonna change it from false to true. So that makes it know that you wanna invert this animation. And in inverting, it's gonna invert everything including their hurt boxes and hit boxes as well. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. Cool. So once you're done in here, you can come over to submit. Right? There's no errors, you're going to get to this screen, which is awesome. Um, there's a scale X, scale Y. Some characters need to be scaled down and scaled up. Um, this is going to scale all of the animations, or it's going to scale all of the sprites, along with all the hurt boxes and hit boxes as well. So you don't have to worry about any of that either. It all handles it all automatically. Um, since we specified that this was a new project, we have to choose a template. I'm going to use my Mugen template that I created. Um, there's also a sprite folder, so this is going to ask you for the sprites that we exported earlier. So it's going to be here, Paul Sprites, going to select that folder. And then we need a project folder to house all the, the, the characters data in, right? So I'm going to make a new one, just call it Paul, it's going to be a new empty folder. And we're going to select that for that. Um, you can also import palettes. Uh, importing palettes are kind of hit or miss, sometimes it works, sometimes it just fails. Just this is kind of the nature of it right at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna do that, so you're gonna go to your Mugen folder that you downloaded and you wanna use the .act stuff. Uh, for the base palette here, it's normally one. That's like your base palette, right? So, and then the other ones um, are basically the rest that you wanna import. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Again, if you hold control, you can select multiple files like that. Uh, open that. Awesome. Um, since this is a new project and not an existing one, we don't even have a costumes file to select, so that's why it's disabled here. <coughs> Excuse me. But if everything works as it should, we hit submit here. It's going to move some stuff over. 
might print some stuff out in here in the console, but it's gonna say character successfully imported. So we can hit okay. Program's gonna close because it's done. So now you come over to the freight tools here. And you wanna come up to file and open. It's not gonna show up in your recent projects for some reason. Uh, actually, you might wanna just do it here. You gotta open. And then you come to your new folder that you made. So for me, Paul, mine's called Mugen Fray Tools because I use the Mugen um, template. So we can open it here. And then we're going to open the character entity to see that our changes were made. And as you can also see here, we have projectile one that entity and projectile two that entity generated. So I have everything in here. See, there's that there's that animation I renamed in, from intro to INTR. Um, Jab one, two, and three here. It's all combined like so, which is cool. So that's cool. Um, and then we gotta find aerial back. Aerial back, aerial back, aerial back. So aerial back here is now inverted because regularly it looks. Where is it? There it is. See, normally it looks like this. So as you can see, it is now inverted, hit boxes and everything like so. Awesome. And then for special up, we have the VFX attached. It's not, you know, it doesn't start, it by default puts it at image layer zero because there's no really good way to know. But it does import the VFX that we wanted for the animation straight into it. We don't have to now add it in later which is cool um we have projectile one and projectile two so this is the guard these are all the animations we selected to make the projectile so they're all in here um and also their retrospective folders are also in here so everything for projectile one animation hitbox script stats all in there same thing for two and also it's already in the manifest as well. So you don't have to really touch much there. Um, the only thing you might want to have to touch is the projectile one stats. You probably want to change it away from character template projectile to whatever it's called, right? Which I'll probably have to add in a future update. So, oh, one last thing. Uh, those palettes we imported, let's see if they work. Either they might not, I honestly don't know. The names are all imported, which is something. So, I'm gonna add a preview image here for Paul. So, base, looking like, yeah, all right. Unfortunate. So it looks like palettes did not work at all for Paul. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look at this later, but I still wanna just get this program out. But that's how you use the Mugen Importer on a brand new project. Uh, I'm gonna be releasing other videos at some point for the other modes but I just wanted to get this one done and out the door. But if you have any questions, uh, ping me on Discord or leave comments in this video. I'm gonna try to do my best to help people. Uh, if there's any errors you get where you're running the program, please send them my way so we can get them fixed. Uh, got, a lot of, got a lot of plans planned for this program, but it just takes a lot to do. I mean, shoot, it's like, this is like almost, 1500 lines long at this point so i got a lot to do a lot of add a lot of change so but anyways i hope this video was kind of helpful in explaining everything i know it's kind of long but kind of had to be long to just explain the tool and everything like that so yeah anyways get out there make something cool with this tool please i want to see more frame makers creations from you guys sick i'll see you guys later peace